Okay, here we are in Creamers. Look at that. The door is open. It's about uh, quarter to two here in the afternoon. And there's our proprietor, Mrs. Kramer Keller, who tells me that it wasn't last year I met you. It was two years ago at the Chicago Pipe Show, and I asked you if I could make a video of you giving the fellows a nice tour Aww. of your famous shop. Now, Thank your you. dad <laughs> had a shop in Chicago, and then he moved here, he, right? He did. He had a store there before World War II on Bryn Mawr, uh, under the L station, and then he got drafted, or he was 1A, and they made him sell his store. He wound up working at a torpedo plant, so he never even went to war. He made torpedoes. But then after the war, they moved to California, and in 1949, he opened the store here. How about that? And it's been right here. We're on, li you call it Little Santa Monica yes, Boulevard? Yeah, the, we stupidly have two Santa Monica Boulevards. Yeah, that's California. what confused me. So, yes. So there's, there's a shopping one and then one that people drive just, on. Yeah, just mainly a road. And road. we're like two blocks from Rodeo Drive, aren't we? One, half a block. How about that? Between Rodeo and Camden, yes. You couldn't ask for, for a better address. No, he was very smart. He, he picked good location. And so how long has the shop been open? 50 okay. years? No, 60... Four, it was Christmas of 1949. How about that? It's almost 64 years. Wow. So for L.A., that's old. And for Beverly Hills, it's like phenomenally old. So. Yeah, th I see across the street there's th things that say for lease and oh, people yeah. open and close all the time. All that's the small time. business, you know. The and the tobacconists well, nationwide have had a hard time staying open. Nationwide. So. And, and California, I mean, very self-righteous taxes, very self-righteous laws and sure. rules. And, you know, so a lot of stores closed. And we're here mostly kind of sentimentally, so we're here. And obviously you enjoy it. We do. My husband and I run it now. And um, he's not here today. I'm sorry. That's okay. And we have two little tables outside, little cafe tables, so people come and... Because you can't smoke. Now, you can smoke in here because, but we don't have like a smoking area. Right. We're small. Right. Right. But um, because it's only it's a cigar, you know, smoke store. Yep. With pipes. But um, normally you can't smoke in stores. Obviously right. In that. Right. Not, not you here. You can't even smoke at the outdoor cafes anymore. But the fellows are out there smoking a stogie as we speak. I so give us a tour. Show us what oh, okay. uh, you have here, and then what I well, want to finish up with is the blends, if that's okay. Down. Well, my dad, actually, he was a very handy, very crafty fellow, and uh, he built all the counters, all the fixtures, all anything that's not a pine, so he built the humidor. How about that? He built all these counters. The humidor even says humidor fresh cigars on yeah. top. <laughs> it's got to be nice to be around things your father built with his own well, hands. Well, it is. It is. And yeah. he was really, I mean, they're... To me, they're treasures because they're so well made, you know. Yeah. Um, so still here. So this, yes. So this is this is our store. My dad, when my dad was here, because smoking was a big deal then, obviously mm -hmm. in Hollywood. Um, all these companies were all filled with pipes, and we had pipes in the back room, boxes and boxes of pipes. Wow. Now you know our pipes are out that we have. We're a small store, but I try if people want things, I try and order them for them. Oh, that's nice. So we do sell a few cigarettes. With Okay, but but mostly cigars yeah. and pipe tobacco and pipes because we're a little like the last man standing. There aren't a lot of pipe and tobacco stores around. There are a few cigar stores left, but um, but we're really the few, you know. And we sell we also sell vintage lighters and vintage stuff that my my husband fixes, and so we have a lot of um, vintage lighters. Yeah, like from the that's in in this cabinet here. Yes, yeah, some here, and then isn't that something? Yeah, they're really neat. And then we have more, um, I don't know how you want to go here, but these are more pipes. And, you know, we sell a lot of nice lighters. And then we have, this is another humidor. Yeah, so you've got two large two, cigar humidors. Yeah. What's I mean, the, the biggest seller for you here in Beverly Hills? Cigar-wise? Yeah. You know, we sell a lot of, um, is it okay to mention brand names? Sure. A lot of Padron Anniversarios. Oh, that's are an big. excellent series. And then we have, we don't get, somehow our store, because we're small also, we don't get the Opus X, the regular, we get the Opus X Lost City, oh. which is still a very, very good cigar. It's an Opus, but it's oh. not the traditional one. And we sell, um, we have some Cohiba and a lot of Monte Cristo, a lot of the blue label Dunhill. So we have, you know, and a lot of Fuentes, um, those are all very high-end cigars yeah. at the retail level. Yes, and... And it says a lot about your location here. It does, but, you know, people still, even though it's Beverly Hills, people don't normally, they don't want to spend the ton of money, and I think... 
for California and our very high tobacco taxes, yeah. our prices are, are really good. I mean, people do comment on that. That's because wonderful. we're not out to make a killing. We just want to kind of be here. Right, you know? just to keep the doors open. Exactly. Exactly. It is kind of camaraderie and fun, and, you know, we have the same customers that come back. So then we have more vintage lighters. These are just kind of nifty. Some of these are called touch tips. They're really old, like from the 20s and 30s, and you, you take it out and you... Yeah, they have those, yeah. those art deco seem, Yes. Styling. We movies. had a customer come in. you got to make money. That's it's all right. into it. That's right. So you were describing how those lighters work. You all said the that there's a wick you stick in yeah, or yeah. something? You, you take out this piece, and you, you push it into that... Well, I can show you one. And, but they're not filled with fluid now, so it's not going to work. But I can't say I've ever seen anything like it. You take that out, and you push it in there. Oh, my goodness. Now, if it, it sparks, so you know there's a flint and everything, but if it, then this would be lit. Oh, so I see. So it's just empty. It, you know, it's like the fluid that evaporates. So. How about that? Yeah, you just use, like, Zippo fluid in yeah. it. Yeah. They are so... I just love old stuff, so obviously. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. So, um... And then we come to our tobacco book. Yes, what I'd like you to do yes. is describe what's going on with these tobaccos because you told me that they're your father's blends Correct. and you've maintained those recipes now all along. Yes. And yes. you've got some very loyal customers, not only here in California, oh, but pretty well we worldwide. We mail all over, absolutely. Um, we have a website, which is www.kramerstobaccoshop.com. So it's K-R-A-M-E-R-S, Tobacco Shop. S H O P, not fancy. <laughs> so that's our that's our website. And now on that website, we have to tell uh, the people who are watching. Yeah, that you can't just go on there yeah, and order. We don't have a store page, but I have a, a page uh, with the pricing, and then you can either email me. My email is there, the store yep. email, um, and then you can email me or call me. We can talk about it. I find that lots of times pipe guys, tobacco guys, like to talk about the blends, you know, so unless you know what you want, um, this way we can talk about it. But oh, the last thing pipe guys are is chatty. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so know. describe them. I'm, I'm looking okay. at uh, seven different blends right. here. My dad had, okay, these are the main ones, okay. and they go from extra mild to very full. The extra mild, he, now my dad was not that fancy with his names. So Extra Mild is called Extra Mild. Now Can you all, open that up? And then you told me that this is a Virginia Cavendish, Cavendish although I have to say it's not It's not very, uh, you know, you don't see black specks or anything in there. No, but there are some, there's some, there is one, one of the Cavendish is dark that's uh -huh. in here, so, but it's not, but it's no Latakia. Um, and then this, even though they're all English blends, my dad called this one English. So this is our medium blend. Okay. It's not, there's and that's a Latakia blend. And that has a little bit of Latakia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a medium blend. Now and I have to blend. say, because you can't tell on video that they're not goopy, uh, heavy things. Uh -huh. They're they're yeah. real light, I mean, immediately smokable the way oh, they're, oh, they're sitting here. Oh, yeah, definitely. it's wonderful. Thank you. The next one has my an interesting name. I must have known what he was doing because I sometimes will get, you know, people will call from all over, and, and some of these are really like dyed in the wool pipe guys. Oh, yes. And they will call me and say, oh, that's the best, this is the greatest recipe. And I'm going, well, I wish I could take credit. My dad must have known what he was doing, you know. Um, he was an, a regular old pipe guy. Yeah, you know? a Midwestern pipe guy, no yes, less. Yes, from Even Chicago. though we're here in uh, Beverly Chicago. Hills. Yeah, Absolutely. right down there. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, I don't know. I don't know how long I have to talk so I can... I'll All the time you want. I'll try and be fast. But no my rush. father's, one of his brothers, ran the concessions in the nightclubs in Chicago in the heyday. And that's how my dad got into even being interested in tobacco, was that he would go to the distributors for his brother and buy the cigars sure. and the stuff for the nightclubs. Right. So he met then a lot of the... Um, I wish I could remember the name. I don't know if it was Mr. Joby. He met some... Pipe guy, and the name I see when your parents are gone, then you can't remember. Yeah. And he taught my dad how to make pipes. Wow. He, my dad always thought for him it wasn't very cost effective. He repaired pipes. My dad had a. Yeah, lathe. I saw the we tools keep, back there. They're right in the window. That we've kept. Um, yeah. We took some of the tools home, but but we have his lathe, and he repaired pipes and lighters right there. Now wow. now we mail them out. Sure. You know, and my husband can fix lighters a little bit. I think he. Um, 
He's a little nervous about fixing pipes because you don't want to mess up somebody's pipe unless you really know That's what you're exactly doing. exactly right. And a lot so. of people have had trouble that way. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And my husband is a perfectionist. So, um, But he's here mostly as the cigar kind of person, and sure. I'm here mostly as the tobacco and pipe kind of person. Well, you obviously know what you're talking about. Well, to a point. Now, this next blend okay, has so a really yes, interesting no, name. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay, this they didn't come called up, New Mix. And new was, Mix. New Mix. And it was probably the last one that he developed, but these were, you know, he opened in 49. This is maybe in 51 or something, 52, maybe he decided. So the this New one. Mix is 1952. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> which would make it 61 years yes. old new. Yeah, it's a really old, old formula. <laughs> and I just blend them from formulas, you know. And, and if people like a little something else, we can tweak it, but, you know, I'm not a blending master. Shouldn't probably admit that. Now this is a Latakia blend, but this is definitely and has a touch of Perique. This is the only one oh, that my dad used Perique, and it's just a touch. And it's the same kind of thing. You'll see that it doesn't stick at all. Yeah. You squeeze it, and boom! It's just smokable immediately. I'm going to buy oh several ounces here oh, from you today of each of these blends, good. and then I'll put my uh, <laughs> put my own opinion on my Excellent. website. Okay, How about that? And then here's the this one that one, you brought to the Chicago yes. show, and everybody I actually, went crazy. I had, all, about I had like some of all of them, but this is my most popular. I brought the other ones also to the Chicago show. And this show, also has an interesting name. This is called Father Dempsey. It's the only one that we have, actually have had trademarked since wow. the Chicago show. Now this is registered. Oh. Um, and up there is a picture, if you can see it, of Father Dempsey. Oh, yes. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit. So he was an Irish priest who, um, his parish was really in Wrightwood, which is up in the um, the mountains, the San Bernardino Mountains. Oh. Um, but he came down to the Church of Good Shepherd, which is right in the back of our store. Oh, and sure. And he met my father. Um, came in here one day, and so this Irish Catholic priest and this little Jewish man from Chicago <laughs> became fast friends. Um, Father Dempsey was really dear. I have letters and notes from him to my parents. Okay. Um, so, yeah, his church was, church I mean, it's was, only a half a block. Oh, from, half a block from here. Yeah. And he came in and, and liked my dad, and then he said, um, you know, I'd love to smoke your tobacco. I smoke a Dunhill tobacco, and um, but if you can mix me up something close to my Dunhill, I'm yours. So they laid out the tobacco on the on the counter on the on the tobacco bar, oh. and my dad could tell what the tobaccos were. He just couldn't tell the proportions. Mm -hmm. So they tried different mixtures until Father Dempsey finally one day said, "That's it. it. It's better than my Dunhill, and I'm yours." So he would smoke this, you know, at the parish because in those days you could smoke. And we had we got a lot of very Hollywood kind of people because they would all go to the Church of the Shepherd. And uh, Cecil B. DeMille was a parishioner. Well, how at about the that? Church, and he said to Father Dempsey, "What are you smoking? I like that." And he said, "Well, I get it right around the corner. Al Kramer, go in and see him." So we used to when I was little, we used to uh, deliver tobacco to 20th Century Fox to Cecil B. DeMille. Wow. Uh -huh. So. That's Father Dempsey. It's a very full Latakia. It's my dad said it was like a campfire burning. In those days, he said it was like kind of like a Balkan Sobrani. We have a, a good friend and, and customer and to my parents named Rick Newcomb, who I'm sure all you pipe fellows know. And Rick has said that he thinks it's very close to the original 965. That's an okay. important thing. Yeah. So that's what Rick has said. Um, I'm, so. Um, and I would so say, you, you, you gave me, I think you gave me an ounce or maybe even an ounce. And I mean, you gave me a lot of it, uh -huh. several bowls I had of it. Okay. And yeah, I would say it's quite close, a little bit lighter than oh, the okay. current 965. Oh, okay. But I wasn't around for the original, the original 965. Well, and it's very of, nice uh, blend, yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah. So what my dad would do then, because he never sold the aromatics that are popular today. So he had an Irish aromatic tobacco. Um and he would blend that into any of these if people wanted a little more aroma yep. in the air. Never as sweet or, or as yep. be, sorry, as the you know aromatics. But um, now that's one thing that's changed a lot. I am fifty, and I've never seen a tobacconist who would say, "Well, let's try some of this and some of that, and come back next week, and we'll see what you like about it or don't like about it." Uh, tobacco purchasing now is largely online, where you buy a tin or something that's been done, and and you know, like your customers do. Well, that's the nice old-fashioned thing of the mom and pop store, the right. what was left that you really do finally get like a relationship with somebody. It's exactly. nice to go in a store and say, you know, to your shoemaker or to your whatever, and know somebody. Yeah. And um, so yes, we we certainly are trying to help you know people find the tobacco that they like. Um, so.